Hello everyone, my name is MJ Vilches and welcome to a modeling stream where we're going to be modeling uh, some kind of torch. Um, I'm, I'm saying it's some kind of torch because that's how it is described in the book Gregor the Overlander by Suzanne Collins and it's actually a replacement of uh, the torch that I did on the uh, on the uh, the animations you know let me show you what i'm talking about here let's see if i can quickly open it for you guys right here in obs because i can't do a mod uh, do a monitor setup right now so i can't record my whole entire screen because it would be really janky the obs recorder is going to be there or obs software is going to be there i'm not going to do that so i'm doing a window capture for now but yeah i'm going to show you uh what the what the torches look like right now and what we're going to do in this stream is we're going to change that. We're going to change it to a different torch. Because I don't like working with... I mean, fire simulation is great, but I think I lit this animation so bright that one single tor torch couldn't possibly... uh, You know, couldn't possibly emit that kind of light. Yeah, it looks like this. This is our torch right now. Looks great, but it's too bright. So I'm gonna change it into something that would make sense for you know like for a light source. For because uh, throughout the animation in the Underland Project Episode One, uh, the tor the torchlight is emitting so much light that one single torch couldn't possibly make that much light. So and it's just bothering me so much. And right now in this stream, we are gonna be modeling a new a new torch that we can use as a replacement for that one so yeah right now we're just gonna do that and the first thing we're gonna do since we're gonna be replacing a, a, an element or something that already exists in the animation what i'm gonna do first is delete the default cube sorry about that for those who are offended on the action of deleting the default cube but yeah i'm gonna go append to the most projects the internet project I'm gonna append the uh, the torch, which should be you know objects torch collection torch, and this is currently our torch right here, and I'm just gonna model a torch based on this the shape and the size. It has to be the same size so you can easily replace the torch on the animation there. So yeah, let's uh let's do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is to design it. And we're gonna do everything like from the from scratch, from from designing it to modeling it to texture. Hopefully, we're gonna be able to do that texture, which is going. We're gonna be stopping there because it's just gonna be an object that's gonna be used for uh, for this. So I'm gonna just keep that for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shift a probably add a new collection right here. I'm gonna add here uh hmm design I guess design collection i'm gonna put the grease pencil object we're gonna be drawing stuff here i'm gonna put the grease and pencil object in the design collection so i'm gonna add a shift a, uh, i'm gonna add a grease pencil shift a grease pencil blank and we are gonna draw our design right here in blender so we don't have to jump to a different program to do that we're gonna do it straight in blender and be awesome about it so i'm gonna go add a new material here probably have to rename it i don't know Let's just bring your name as ink. Let's just name that ink. Uh, and set, uh, make this white so we can easily see it. And of course, save our projects. I'm going to save it in the Unland project, Blender projects, uh, objects. It should be objects or props. I should, I should have named that props. And I'm going to go torch 002. So this is the second torch, the second design of the torch. And we are going to design it right here on the stream so let's see or you know in the video if you're watching this you know uh, uh if you're watching this after the live stream you're watching this you know not live so i'm gonna turn on auto keying so i can easily draw here because it won't immediately do it it won't immediately uh put the stroke that we're drawing if we don't set the auto key to on. 
Now, what we're going to do is I want to make sure that this object, the grease pencil object, is always in front of everything. So I'm going to set this in the, view, in the viewport display of the object data properties, I think, is this one. Yeah, object properties. I'm going to set, I'm just going to check in front. So our grease pencil object is always in front of every element in the viewport. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an effect here. I think it's effect. No, it's not. It's a modifier. I'm going to add a mirror modifier. And we are going to use that to create our torch. So this is going to be uh, a much more cleaner torch than how I previously did it. More straight. Uh, it's more like crafted. It's like a torch that the Underlanders invented to emit more light and use less fuel. You know, that's just kind of what I, my, 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 like, uh, my, uh, the mindset in creating the design of this thing. Because this is a torch that the under Underlanders invented to help them, you know, because, you know, they have to invent many ways of, like, reducing the usage of fuel in their, in their torches. So this is one of those torches. So this is uh, an Underland torch uh, in the book. Suzanne Collins described the torch that the cockroach was bringing as some kind of torch. She didn't say bringing a torch. She said some kind of torch. So this must be a torch that's not, you know, it's not a, it's not just, you know, just the basic torch. Because it's some kind of torch. It's got a unique design for Suzanne Collins to, you know, describe it that way. So that's kind of what my mindset is as to, uh, with this thing. So I'm just going to go do this and it's gonna be like some kind of a, a, a lamp with a torch that is made to look like a torch because it's easier to bring it that way and you can also use it as a weapon so the torch will look like that And then we're going to add a sphere, a circle here. Probably not a good idea to add a circle, maybe a curve. I'm going to add a curve. So it's some kind of uh, a, like a unique design for a torch. So I'm just going to do that. Set this connected only and we're going to edit this to like, really have that. Uh, weird kind of like a, a a new design for a torch i don't want it to look weird though it's probably something that should look like you know like a lamp a gas lamp so it's probably going to be crafted like this And it's gonna, it's gonna have like the, it's gonna, have, it's, it has the ability to, uh, you know, to just emit light. I'm not exactly sure, you know, I'm not great at, uh, like, the science of how stuff works, but you know, let's just make it look like it makes sense, you know. That's kind of what I'm aiming for here. So we have our torch here. It's going to be a hole on top of this, for. You know, the oxygen to go in. You need oxygen for fire, right? And if there's no wind or air or gas, then our torch won't work. Wait, did I? Yeah, I think I just did an oopsie here. Because I have the mirror modifier on. I have to only work, I have to only use like half of it. So we have our torch looking nice here. Let me just grab this. Make that bigger. Bring that up. I'm just going to uh, scale it to the x-axis. And then we are going to add another like kind of protector above here. And then a curve. I'm going to get a curve. Oh, wait, no, not like that. So 
I'm going to add a curve here. Like that. And there's going to be some kind of like a, a protection cage right here. Ah, I can't add that. Can I? I can't add it because then I'd have to worry about... No, no, it shouldn't shouldn't really be emitting any shadow. Wait, wait, wait. How do we do this? How do we do this? Maybe it's going to be like one of those unique designed... Tell you what. Suspension... Suspension... Susp suspension of disbelief. We're going to add... Some kind of like a cage thing going on here to protect it from like, you, know, you can use it as a weapon. And also to protect it from breaking. This is just, that's just what this thing does here. And that's going to be happening. There's going to be four of that on each side of the, of the torch. So this is an underland, underlander torch. As I said, this is just something they do, they have to protect the lamp. Since, you know, light is very important in the Underland. So I'm going to, like, I design a torch that is very bright, but is also very durable. So I'm probably going to add one more of like a circular thing down here to finish up the design of our torch. Like so. Maybe 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 we can even go more uh weird about it. Just go with something like this. I can probably extrude uh wait wait can extrude a line here and there we go we have our new torch design and it's looking really great i love it i love it now we can start modeling so yeah this is that's just a quick grease pencil designing of our torch we have a design here that we can use now i'm going to start modeling it so i'm going to delete the old torch here and delete that we don't need that anymore we need a new one so I'm going to go new collection. I'm going to go torch to V2. And this is going to be a torch that we're going to be using to replace the other one. So I guess I don't need to rename that because this is just a project, another project file that we're going to be using. And we're just going to be appending from it. We're not going to be like rendering and stuff. So now we have that. Let's, I'm gonna shift S cursor to world origin to make sure that the cursor is right there on the world origin. That's also going to be the origin of our torch, which is how it is on the original one as, as well. So I'm just gonna control save that, shift A. Yeah, yeah, save, shift A. I'm gonna add a, I think it would be easier to add uh, a circle. Instead of a, a cylinder, I'm gonna add a circle for this. I'm gonna use eight vertices for the circle. It's not gonna be that big. Or it's not going to be that much, you know, vertices on it. And do something like that. And then I'm going to go add a subdivision surface modifier. And I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'm just going to scale it down some right here. Because this is a circular cylindrical object. Uh, you know, we don't have to worry about how it would look on the side. Because it would just be the same in, on each side. So I'm just going to extrude this right here and then scale it up. And then I'm going to press Alt-S, I think, to, to yeah, you know scale the thickness. Kind of like how you scale the thickness of the grease pencil object, the grease pencil stroke as well. So we have something like that. I'm going to add that. I'm going to make that shade smooth. So now that looks great. That's our first, that's the first part of the torch. I can go even um, a bit more and um, a bit more there. I'm gonna, just going to scale this down, bring this down some right here. I need to turn on x-ray here and then set the x-ray to 1 so we can see it. Now we can see that right there. 
Let's see if things are going well. It is. We keep going. So we scale this up right here. And then I'm going to scale up again. And then scale on the scale shift Z to scale on the X and Y axis, except the Z axis. I'm going to shade smooth that. And then I can add another one, another loop right here to make that edge kind of smoother there. Let me add a new viewport. I mean, uh, make one more level for the viewport display there. So, so I'm just going to go select this one and then control numpad plus to select the other edge loops around it. And then move this down right here. Like that. And then I can even extrude in, inwards like this probably. First a small one and then a big one. And then finally, tell you what, we're not going to finally yet. I'm going to leave this uh, open here for now because that's going to be where our fire or light is going to be. So we go, we're going to use that. It's like a, I'll tell you what, let's keep going. I'm just going to extrude something like this. Like that. I'm going to add an edge loop like this to like sharpen the edges there. Double tap G to for edge slide. And we have uh, the torch, like the fire thing going on here. So for the fire, I'm probably going to be using uh, a, te a texture instead of a, like a fire simulation. So that I can just drag and drop this and then the fire is just going to go on or it won't even have anything on it probably because this will be covered by uh, some lens flare it just needs to look like really weird but yeah we have the base part of the torch there i'm gonna grab this edge loop right here and shift d oh no don't shift d yet i need to deselect everything by pressing alt a and i'm gonna select that edge loop again I can turn off the design for now so we can see it clearly. As you can see, looking great. Need that back. I can probably uh, reduce the opacity of this. So it's not that, doesn't hurt that much on the eye. You probably can't see it that much though if you're watching on, the, on YouTube. All right, there. I just increased the opacity there. So you can still see it. I'm just going to do that, extrude it downwards, scale it down or inwards, extrude it downwards again, and then another one, and then I'm going to scale it to go inside. I'm going to W, shade smooth, and we are good to go. I'm actually using a, a right-click select for this, by the way, if you're watching, if you're a beginner who's watching, I'm using a right-click select. You can bring out this menu by, you know, right-clicking. And then select stuff by left clicking. But since I'm an older Blender user, I'm used to the right click select. And that's why I'm using it. So I'm just gonna go uh probably scale this this one right here to make it look like that. So now we have that. I can add another edge loop right here. And I'm going to use that shift D that up here and just scale it up. Oops, control Z, scale it up. I'm going to do something like this. So this is just a simple torch design with a small backstory to it. But since it's based on a book, it's pretty easy for me to figure out what I want for it. So I'm just going to press M at center so it's merged there. Uh, that's probably that's a bad idea, actually. I'm just going to do something like this. Extrude one more time for us before I merge that. I'm going to bring that up and add another edge loop here. Scale it up some. Bring it up. Bring back that curve there. And that should be great. Now let's keep going. I'm going to grab this. Shift D. Not, as you can see, I'm not adding any more circles. I'm just using the existing ones. 
it's quicker. I'm just gonna extrude this. This is going to be the glass part. Because that's gonna be that middle one right there. As you can see, you can probably see how it's kind of looking like a like a gas lamp. So I'm just gonna shade smooth that. Hey there, uh are you are you stuff? Thanks for uh watching. I mean, welcome to the stream. Uh game dev, something that I wanna um, you know figure out. I wanna dabble on that some other time. Right now it's really filmmaking and animation. Cause that's something that's the main thing. That's the main thing that I wanna do. The game uh, game making stuff, that's you know, just something a little extra that I wanna do sometime in the future. But for now, yeah. This is it. But yeah, if you're, you know, a game developer, developer, you can probably use this torch. I'm gonna be giving this away, by the way, for free. I'm gonna be giving this away for free, and my little sister's saying she's a game developer. She's starting to make, uh, Roblox, uh, games. But yeah, I'm gonna be giving this model away for free. After I model this thing, after I'm done. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be uploading it on my Kofi shop. You can, you can, you know, you can download it. For zero dollars, or if you wanna, you know, support me, you can add some, some, a few dollars there. Yeah, you have an option to do that. You can pick the price from zero to however much you wanna pay for it. But yeah, I'm gonna give it away. So, you know, if you wanna use it for games, maybe you can. It's probably low poly enough for you to use in games. Or you can, you know, convert it. Like I said, I did not dabble in game making yet. Or optimizing a model for for uh, games, so there's really nothing much I can uh, tell you guys about that. This is this model is purely is the purpose of this model is to be used for an animation, for a film animation, or filmmaking, for a 3D animated film. So I'm gonna make it as detailed as I can. Without making it too, you know, high poly. So we have pretty much, we're pretty much done with the modeling here. And we're only like 24, 25 minutes in. So yeah, my, my little sister, by the way, is nine is about nine years old right now. And she's making Ro uh, Roblox games. Not not the, you know, it's, of course it's not. But she might hear me. <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're, they're decent enough. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's uh let's keep going here. Uh, I'm gonna model uh the 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 uh, the the cage thing right here that will protect the the torch from uh the, the torch glass here from being destroyed. It's like the torch frame. So I'm just gonna go do something like this, like that. And then I'm gonna control L. Extrude that to X axis, extrude it outwards like this. So for now, yeah, I guess that's doesn't look that great. I also need to close this one actually. This one at the top here. So I'm just close that and then M add center. And we should have a nice little thing going on here. I can probably go and bevel this one. Control B. Yeah, just maybe reduce the distance from each other. Like so. I'm probably gonna bevel the other one. I'm not gonna bevel too much because it adds too many polys on the model. I don't want to do that. I want to keep my models, you know, uh, just for this animated short. I don't want to keep it not too detailed, not too, not too, you know, not too heavy for the for the lab though, because it, as I said, it's going to be used for animation. And it has, I need to be able to animate this without lagging that much. So I'm just going to go add another one right here, right there. For our cage. Like this. Rotate it like that. And then extrude it again. And this is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, that looks great. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably gonna give that 
a try but then again this is a, uh, a stream that i just started without planning i usually put thumbnails on my streams right now since you know i don't really know what i'm about to do i decided to not put a thumbnail but yeah i usually put thumbnail thumbnails on my streams it's just this one i did not really plan to stream but you know there i'm still experimenting on like pro perfect time like an ideal time for me to stream something that's comfortable for me to stream during that time and also you know some people can join in and so far this stream is I'm getting some viewers i guess than the than the usual i don't get my usual viewers i mean the usual viewers are uh, not really chatting right now we're not watching so yeah i'm just gonna go do that and since we have that now i could probably just i'm either gonna use a mirror modifier or hmm, let's see i'm gonna try something else first i'm gonna go add a solidify modifier with this so that i don't have the mod you know then don't need to solidify some stuff here i'm gonna tab shift n to calculate the recalculate the normals here and then let's uh let's not make the thickness too much maybe about 0 0.01 0 0.01 is even too much 0 0.005 there we go that's looking nice Okay. Yeah, that's nice. That's definitely nice. Next thing I want to do. Yeah, I'm not going to do a mirror modifier. I'm just going to. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift. I'm going to. I need to put the cursor on the middle first. So I'm just going to select the circle here. Shift S. Cursor to selected. Now we have the 3D cursor there. I can then uh, select all of this. 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 Just this. You know, just this frame right here. Or bars or whatever it's called because this is like a, a sci-fi object sci-fi object <laughs> it's, a, it's an object that doesn't really exist in real life or maybe an object like this exists in real life but doesn't exactly look like this but yeah this is just something that I kind of it's some kind of torch you know so yeah i'm just gonna select this I have the 3D cursor away from the center again for some reason. Shift S cursor to select it on that center right there. Just making sure that the 3D cursor is right there. I'm going to press period. Set it to 3D cursor. I'm going to shift D, R, Z, 180. And that should give us the other frame right there. And then I'm going to select both of these guys. Shift D, R, Z, 180 or no 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 rz 90 degrees and there we go we have a complete torch so i'm going to also add a uh edge loop right at the top there we have this is a very thick glass too let's see let, let's reduce this 0 0.002 and that's a very thin frame now Point zero zero three. Maybe just enough to like hold this whole part together. Like the thickness of this one. Point zero zero four. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna stick with point zero zero four. I'm gonna add an edge loop here. And I'm gonna bevel this guy's right here. Control B. Yeah, beveling. Tell you what, I'm going to recalculate the normals of this and make this inside. Because it was outside. It was outside. And now, it's looking how we want it to look. So now I can hide the design here. We don't need that anymore. We just need this. I'm going to add a bit more edge loops on the center of the, of the handle there of the torch. And now we have... Our torch. I just need to control L. I'm going to hide this for now. Because we need to figure out how we're going to do the fire here. Although I do have an idea how I'm going to do it. And that's something that we're going to have to do as a separate object. So I think we can keep going for now. I'm going to Alt-H this. 
Okay, that's looking nice. So, yeah, what do you mean about the uh, adding a sphere type shape on top with different color? We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I don't want to make it too complicated in the design because this is just supposed to be a simple object that they use daily in Regalia in the Underland. In the it's a it's a story by Suzanne Collins. If you have no, if you don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah, this is a torch that I made based off of what I think would be like useful for them who lives underground without light, and they designed a torch that could last longer and will emit light a bit brighter i mean brighter than a than a regular torch because yeah uh if you haven't seen um my original torch it looks like this uh, this is uh the torch is for this animation right here and i just wanted to replace this torch with something more you know more unique and also you know that could make that could emit emit light brighter because right now the way i set up the lighting for this the, the torch uh, like the, the light is just so bright for a torch like this to emit so i'm changing it to something like this to give it like you know kind of like a, to make things more make more sense i guess and to also give it a nice like uniqueness to the world because it's a different world so there's just that's a cockroach holding a Holding a, a torch there. So now, I guess we can proceed into uh, adding some materials to this. So I'm thinking on whether or not I'm going to add textures or just some procedural materials. But tell you what, let's go. Let's go procedural for this. Let's go procedural. So I'm gonna go first to see. Uh, first, actually, I'm gonna control shift S. I'm gonna save a backup. Just in case. So, backup. Torch 2. Saving a backup. Very important. I'm saving that so we have a backup of the, of the model not being touched or, you know, not, not uh, modified in any way. And now we can keep going. I just I made sure to come back to the original blend file here and we're not editing the backup. So, we have our torch model done. Now we can proceed to shading. So, we're going to go to the shading layout. And we zoom in on that torch right there. I'm going to not use this, guys. So, I'm going to just close that so we have a clear view here. And the first thing I'm going to um, texture add texture with is the, 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 the bottom part right here. But first, uh, never mind. We're going to really start a new material here. So I'm going to go add a new material. Torch. Handle. Tell you what, let's just add materials for each of the elements that we're going to be adding materials here. So torch handle. And then there's going to be torch metal. Torch metal one. And that's going to be this guy's right here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to add an another metal later, but for now, just the one. I'm going to change the color of that to bluish for torch metal. And I'm going to select all of the elements that I'm going to be using the torch metal material with. So I'm just going to assign that. We have a different color for that now. I also need to select these guys right here. Assign. And there we go. I'm going to add... Another material material called this torch glass. Now let's change the color to yellow for now. Control L. Gonna assign this. And we're going to set the blend mode to alpha blend. This is probably going to have to be alpha hashed. Alpha hashed, maybe. And then we're going to set the alpha. We're going to reduce the alpha of this. I'm going to go alpha blend. Alpha blend. I'm going to reduce the alpha of the glass material for now. Great. 
just so we see what's inside now we can go and add more to our torch handle here so for the torch handle it's going to be made of it's not going to be made of wood because torches are like it's uh i mean woods wood is not exactly a thing that the people underground have that much because you know they live underground woods don't really you know, trees don't really grow underground so it's going to be difficult for them to like have something that they use every day to be made of wood so this part below would be made with i actually have no idea what it will be made of um tell you what it's got to be made from bones i think maybe it's better for them to use bones for this because there's probably a bunch of bones of like really big creatures underground than, than woods not sure though for now it's just gonna be like a generic wood um, i think wood i'm gonna go with wood for now i don't have like a, a story behind it yet but yeah, I'm going to go with wood. I can probably go, instead of uh, using a procedural texture, I'm going to use a texture from, from, uh, Texture Haven here. So textures. So I'm going to select textures here. Let's go pick a rocked texture, maybe. I'm just going to do something like that. And does that work? Oh, I need to set the uh, input texture coordinate. Need to set this to generated, maybe. Let's see how that looks. And there we go. We have an interesting texture already. Yeah, definitely just going to just gonna use um, uh, textures from Texture Haven. So uh, you can easily get like stuff like that looking great. So I'm going to use that as the color. And then I'm going to shift the, the image texture here. I'm just going to grab a, a grab the displacement or the bump map here. And I'm going to go with the, with the bump map. And we're going to attach it to the normal. So I'm going to go uh, vector, I think, bump. We're going to set the color to the height. And normal, uh, we're going to attach it to the normal on the principal BSDF there. And that should give... Hey there, I'm buddy. Welcome to the stream. I'm just gonna see what we can do here. Maybe I don't really see uh, let's control Z that. I'm just looking. That looks great, but I kind of don't like it. So we're going to have to edit stuff here. I'm going to go uh, to vector mapping. And I'm going to try to scale this material here. Reduce the scale so we can get like a bit more. I'm going to try reducing the scale of the Y axis here. No, not that. Z axis. Oh, it's got to be X. So, yeah, let's reduce it little. Uh, no, no, no. Reduce it little by little. Maybe I have to make it. No, 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 no. It's really easy. Well, the good thing about procedural is that it's easier to control. Let me try setting this to UV. If that does something. Yeah, UV doesn't do anything. I'm just going to go with this. I guess I'm gonna play around with uh with the world here. Let me try a different lighting condition, just so we really see how this look here. We have a bump node here. Could probably increase the strength. Oh, just gonna put that there. Let's see. Let I'm gonna try adding a new texture here. 
image texture open let's go back to rocks i'm gonna use the displace i could set this to color this is gonna be in cycles by the way so i guess it's best to like change that i'm gonna go try and tell you what uh first i'm gonna reduce the uh samples to about maybe just five and 20 that's the samples i use for the animation so i guess it's fine uh, i probably need to set up a, a quick lighting setup here or i could just use uh environment texture it's from again from hdri haven i need to bookmark this uh no not this i need to bookmark the hdri We're going to get an HDRI here so that we have a just a quick lighting setup going on. Tell you, oh, boy. Kind of lagging here. Oh, no. It's lagging. It's lagging. It's loading up the images. And these are really big images. So I can't blame the PC if it can't handle it. Let's just get Blender Institute here. Let's see if that looks great. There's the Blender Institute. And I just wanna look at the how our uh, how our torch looks. So select that. I'm going to need to change the color of this. Let's see. Hmm, I guess it's fine. I guess the color is fine. I just want to change it to something more red. Maybe add a bit of green there. No, no, no. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, that looks good. I think. Control B. Right there. Control B. Okay, we're good. Hey there, uh, Tendai's World TV. You can only get better, man. Just, you know, practice. Just practice. You're gonna be good, too. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not really good as well. I'm also still learning. But yeah, you can definitely be better than how you were, how you are, how you think you are now. You're probably even better than me. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna go, uh, factory thing, displacement. Let's add that right there. Gonna put this to height instead. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I need to go Alt R Alt G this camera here, so we can we can see the torch on it. Uh, it's probably a bad idea using the Blender Institute as the HDRI here. Let's pick a different HDRI so we can properly see what's going on here and that. You know, it would have. Okay, I think we're good with the handle. Let's proceed to the other materials of the torch here. I'm going to go to the torch metal. And for the torch metal, I'm going to do the same method. I'm going to go... Grab a texture from Texture Haven. These are textures that's free to use. You can use it for anything that you want for free. That with no strings attached. That's what I really like it about it. But yeah, you can support Texture Haven if you want. Through their uh, Patreon, I think. So I'm going to use this metal. Let's go, let's go here on the EV render for now. Material preview. So I'm going to go color. I need to set a texture coordinate for this input texture coordinate. So, yeah. 
That looks nice. The stretching of the metal there doesn't look nice, though. Or maybe that can be a design thing. It doesn't look great on the on the thingy, though. So for this, I guess we're not going to go texture. What we're going to do is we're going to go a procedural one. So I'm going to go texture, noise texture. Uh, I'm going to go add a uh, color ramp right here. Attach it to the base color and attach this factor to there. And we're going to start with black and white for now, just so we see. I'm going to go also add the texture coordinate again. I shouldn't have deleted the other one. But oh, well, we can, you know, keep going here. And as you can see, there's, you can already see, like, what we're going for here. Let me increase the blacks of that. To make it smaller, I can use, can increase the scale. This is kind of like scales up the picture, so th there's more finer details to it. Add more roughness to it. I guess set the roughness to like really high there. I'm just going to keep the distortion to zero probably. Maybe, maybe something like that. Yeah, it looks nice. Now we can uh, experiment on the colors. It's got to be a bit of a rusty color to it. Like orange. And then I'm going to set the metallic to high for this because this is metal. Reduce the specular to about 0.25. So what's happening here? So yeah, make movies. That's that's the that's the current plan. And right now I'm working on a this is a, like I said this is for a 3D animated film, and uh, you know, this is a shot from that 3D animated film, and I'm trying to replace the torch here with this one. So I'm going to keep going. So I'm just going to do that. Maybe a point, point 0.5 will do. This will look different in cycles, by the way. We probably need to switch to cycles as well. And hope. I think the PC can handle it. This kind of thing I can't handle. I can't really do before because I only work on a laptop before. So I can't do a preview render like this. This is something that I can. This is something that I can, that, that that I can only do now because of the PC. Yeah, right now this looks great. Like I said, this won't have really complicated uh, designs or texture to it, just to give you the illusion that there is that it's some kind of a torch. So we have that. Let's see. It's pretty much looking great. I probably just have to add. And I'm not aiming for... I, once again, uh, again, I'm not aiming for realism here. Just to make it look... It's more of a stylized kind of rendering. It's probably more we can add to this. Maybe change up the colors. And then not make the... Like the... uh like that rusted part shiny so i'm gonna set the factor of this to roughness let's see what that does so what it what did is it made the rusted part shiny we just have to go color invert and that should fix the problem anything that's rusted is not shiny well the one that's not rusted is not shiny i'm probably gonna redo get rid of the distortion here this one looks way better. I'm just gonna go maybe reduce the rustiness. I probably need to use this one instead, the color.
So there you go. Looks nice. It's definitely got that. Oh, that's too shiny now. I probably need to also add a converter. Math. Let me set this to multiply. And what this does is it just reduces the, like the amount of roughness. If I set this to one, that would be too insane. Point zero two, maybe. Oh, never mind. Maybe this is supposed to be add. Let's see what this does. Nah. Multiply. Shit, my do I have to go negative one or really low? Hmm. That's so shiny. So shiny. Let's see if we increase this, what's going to happen. Yeah, this is not the answer to our problem. The answer to our problem is changing this to a darker color. As you can see. This controls how, you know, how shiny it will be. The whiter it is, the shinier it is. So I'm going to add... Uh, let me just... I'm going to add another... Like node uh, another like setting here i'm gonna bring this right here and if i want to bring back some of the shininess there i can do something like that i'm gonna increase the uh i'm gonna increase this and this one is gonna be set to like really white so that there are parts here that are still very shiny but not really Let's bring that down some. And I probably need to reduce the scale here so that it's not too... too rusted. But yeah! As you can see, it's looking, um, not, it doesn't, that's not looking great. So we're gonna have to uh, do something about it. Now this needs to be, like, orangey. Like for the rust like orange at the edge i'm gonna add another node and then like really red orange on the center i'm gonna try giving it more here so it looks like that And I have to reduce like, the amount of rust even more. So there we go. I can preview this in cycles. And uh, it's looking great. Let me just... Uh, maybe add RGB curves here. So we can add a bit more color to it. They're more red. Or more green for moss. We can add... We can make this red here. Probably reduce green. Bring it back to the rusty reddish tint. Or... That's purple. And this is even more old looking right here. Tell you what, it's too bright, it's too white, it's too clean. It shouldn't be too clean. So I'm gonna reduce the shininess of that even more. Yeah, there we go. This is our metal one. We are going to also add a metal two for the shader. So I'm gonna add a new material, put this above here. I'm gonna select Torch Metal 1 and I'm just gonna press number 2 here to make a duplicate of that. I mean, to make that a separate material. And just rename this Torch Metal 2. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to assign uh, this one. Uh, excuse me. This 2 right here. I'm gonna assign it to Torch Metal 2. And then I'm going to make the whole thing darker. So now. It's darker right there 
adding a bit more variation to the look of our our torch i probably need to also include this guys right here for the torch metal too just gonna assign that and do this and there we go we have a torch some kind of torch <laughs> going on and we're good to go to the next material which is the glass so we're gonna do the glass next um it's going to have a clear coat so i'm gonna yeah specular add more clear coat to this let's go to cycle render for this one gonna add a clear coat clear rough clear coat roughness reduce that and i think what the clear coat does is makes it shiny as you can see it's really shiny maybe you can't really see it that much let's go make the alpha higher and then uh, i'm not gonna set the i tell you what i'll reduce that a bit Tell you what, for this, I'm not going to be using a principled BSDF. I'll use a glass modifier. I mean, a glass shader. So shader, I'm going to add mix shader here. Put it in surface. Shader, again, I'm going to add a glass BSDF. And the transparent BSDF. Shader, transparent BSDF. Like that. And... Uh, we probably have a really nice looking glass here. This is more towards the glass. It's probably best to just do something like this for the glass. Just a glass BSDF. But we need to add a bit more to it. So I'm just going to go add in a uh, principal BSDF again. Mm, do I have to add a principal BSDF? Probably not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the uh, the material, the, the the this one, the noise texture setup that we have here. I'm going to control, control C this. I'm going to control V this here. I'm going to plug that into roughness. And then I'm probably going to delete some of this. Oh. Probably going to get rid of this. And that. So the, so the blacker, the darker it is, the, the more rough the, the texture is. So we can't really see it. I'm going to try adding more scale so we have our torch right here i'm gonna try to do a quick render i'm gonna be using i'm gonna be using a denoising a quick of uh, test render here i'm gonna go to compositing use node shift a i'm gonna search for denoise i'm just gonna plug the normal nobido there and i'm gonna render just a quick Render. We can do that now on the PC. Can't do that before. Now we have some kind of torch. Let's start, wait for the noising to work. Look at that. Some kind of torch. One final thing that I need to do before we end the stream. Because we're one hour into the stream now. And there's one last thing that I want to do, and it's to add the the fire in the middle. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this. I'm going to shift A. I'm going to shift uh, probably, yeah, shift A. Not, not shift A, shift right click, uh, shift alt right click or shift alt left click to select an edge loop. And then I'm going to shift A, add a circle. No, 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 not add a circle. No, no, no. Control Z that. 
objects i need it to be different let's rename this torch i need it to be a different object so i'm gonna shift a add um i'm just gonna go to viewport display here and make the color make the alpha you know a little bit like that so we can see it there we go and i'm gonna Selecting the torch collection, I'm going to add uh, a UV sphere probably here. UV sphere. Just going to set it to 12 and 8. And then I'm going to scale it down right here. And this is going to be our fire. So I'm just going to go set, uh, turn on the proportional editing here and set this to sharp. And we have a quick fire. Quick fire. And this fire will be an emission. I need to parent this to the torch first. So selecting the... Uh, let's make this... Let's name this fire. Selecting the fire. And then selecting the torch. I'm going to control P. Object. Parent to the object. And now, So now if we remove the torch, the fire is also there. So now what we need to do is we're going to go to shading and we're going to add a texture for this fire. So what we're going to do is going to add a new material. Add name this fire. I'm going to remove the principal BSDF. I'm going to go find the emission shader. That's what we want. Set, this, set, set that as a surface. going to increase the intensity of that probably to 50. So that it really becomes like a source of light. But I'm also going to add like a secondary light there. But it's just going to be going to be on the in the animation, not on the not here. And what we're going to do and add a texture coordinate node here. Also going to add a noise texture again. Set this to generated. Set that to factor. I'm going to add a color ramp node. And this will determine the color of our fire. So I'm going to go do that. And uh, maybe... Hmm, maybe make it yellow. Add another node. Make it orange. Like a strong orange. Increase the scale. Let me just go back, go to the texture coordinate, I mean the, the material preview here. Yeah, we can't really see. Yeah, maybe I have to do it in edit mode. I need to select the fire. I want to hide that from the material preview, but I don't think we can do that. I'm going to go to viewport display. It is set to alpha blend. And what can we do here? I guess we're going to be doing the in the, in, in cycles preview, in the render preview, render preview. This is not supposed to be yellow, more orange. Like that, I probably need to add alpha here. So, uh, convert uh, shader, make shader, and then I'm gonna add another shader, transparent BSDF shader, and put that there. And I'm gonna set the color ramp as the uh, factor for this. But it needs to be converted to back to like a uh, black and white i'm gonna experiment on stuff here let's see i'm gonna add math node on the factor here to see if i can there we go now we can really reduce the uh, alpha of the fire three maybe maybe uh one point uh two point five two 
0.75. Cause yeah, that's the fire. And we are actually going to animate the vector here mapping. Maybe just animating the location of that fire would be enough to make it look like fire. As you can see there, you can already see some really nice fire animation going on there. Let's see if I can... Let me hide this. We don't need that for now. We're gonna look here. Whoa, that's rendering pretty fast for us. So as you can see, this is how our, how our fire looks like. I probably need to reduce the value here. Let's see. Yeah, we need to bring that out more. I'm going to try setting this to white. Maybe that... Um, one, one, let's see if that, it's probably black. That brings out the alpha. Okay, white, white then. Two point five. Let's bring that back to yellow. Yellow-ish. Yellow-ish. I'm just gonna add more orangeness to our fire here. And let's I'm gonna add more more color here. Yeah, probably going to the towards the red one. So there we go. And then if we see we animate like x axis or the z axis here, we can probably give the illusion of a fire going on there. It's just the z axis already does that. Going negative, going to the negative. Keeps that fire burning all day long. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go zero. I'm going to add a keyframe. Wait, tell you what, I'm going to go to animation here. Actually shading, I need it to be in shading. Let's just open a, a, a dope sheet here, dope sheet. So I'm going to animate the z-axis of this zero. And then on frame 20, it's going to be neg negative 10. Zero. Then I'm gonna go. Uh, I think it was Shift T. No, it's not Shift T. Excuse, excuse me. Is it Control T. No. Uh, we need the Control Tab to curve. Is it T T is that? I forgot how to do the interpolation thing. Shift. Um, was it R? No. T Y. It's not Y. There's something that I can that can be done here. Let me just select this so we see that. Something about the interpolation of this. So interpolation type. Uh, oh, where was it again? Um, let's see. Is it interpolation mode? There's a way to do this to make. Let me just uh, see what we can do here. I think it's right here. Yeah, it's V. It's V and it should... Mm, it's not vectors. How could I forget this? I already figured this out. I think... Is it? No, it's not E. Shift E. Yeah, it's Shift E. Shift E. Linear interpolation. And what that does, it, it just it keeps going. If you press play, it will just keep going. You don't have to like change the anything I, I can change the speed of the of the fire by adding more space between the keyframes there and we have ourselves a nice flame on the middle there
And there we go. And that looks in, that's looking nice. Let's try adding more intensity to this fire. So that it's really glowing there. Maybe about 2,000 emission strength there. So that there's really a, you know, a certain amount of light coming from this. I can even go so far as to add a wave modifier to the object there. But I think it's waving way too much. So we're going to reduce the height to about 0.1 maybe. And still too much. 0 0.05. Still too much, 0 0.001. Too low now, 0 0.002. Let's go a bit more higher, 0 0.005. And there, our our little light in the middle is, uh, you know, it's, there's a slight animation to it. You know, up, up and down. I can probably also along normals here. Probably... Yeah, do something like that. And I can change the position of this. Mm, maybe not a long normal. So this is looking great. Mm, but the long normals also looks great. I think this one looks better. The one that's going up and down. Then again, this will be covered by a lens flare and a bunch of other effects to make this light even more intense. So... We're good here. It's just something that I want to add there so that when I add the torch, I have a nice element of fire right there that's emitting so much brightness that it makes sense. So yeah, I think we're good. I can just go to rendering here. We're going to render our torch. Render our torch. And there we go. Nice. We did uh, some kind of torch. In Blender, in how many hours did that? One hour, I guess. Yeah, about one hour. So there we go, our nice torch light kind of thing. I probably need to make it really more intense in terms of brightness for this. So let's go 5,000 and do a test render again. And thanks to the mo the powerfulness of my laptop now i mean on my pc now i don't know i can do something like that I could just render so there we go our torch it is looking great i love it hey what i'll go 10000 just just for the fun of it Let's see how that looks. So I can definitely add more details to it. But as I said, I don't want to be too realistic with the design of the torches. So because I want it to fit, you know, the, the, the design, the style that I'm work, uh, that I went for, for, you know, for, for the animation. So it's not going to be realism, just, you know, kind of, kind of looking kind of weird. And I think I'm, I've, I've succeeded in doing that. So, yeah, there we go. We have our fire. I can even do a fire simulation inside of there if I want, but I don't want to do that. So, yeah, I think we're good. Uh, our torch is done. This is something that I'm going to be using for the animation, replacing this torch, as I said. So this torch will be replaced. Uh, this new one is going to be the one so yeah we're good to go and yeah that's all for this stream i guess thank you so much to everyone who watched today to ayush stuff to tendai's tendai's world tv to everybody of course and to jane and to bryce czm thank you for watching the stream and to you who watch this stream after it's after, if you didn't watch it live and you watch up to this point after it was live, thank you so much. Uh, I also want to give a huge thanks to who supported me through Kofi, to Handsome Ness Jubin, to Eric Madrigal, Agency, Fritz, to Elizabeth Money, Magnolia Weather Shield, to ZQ Star, Jane, Tristan Wintel, 
Camera Gauge and M Buddy, thank you so much to you guys. They supported me through code-free.com slash Dudenose Productions. And if you want to support me, uh, go there too. Um, also, follow Dudenose Productions everywhere on the internet. And yeah, I, I will be giving this model away for free. I'll be putting it on my coffee shop. Just the link will be shared in the description below once I have it set up. But yeah, for now, that's all. Uh, thanks for watching. My name is MJ Vilchaz. And yeah, bye.